opportunity because to lead into this, uh, we we're we're in an era right now where we are, like you said, growing. How can we grow as good a crop or better crop with less? And then how can we grow? You know, regenerative agriculture has made a huge explosion in the last. I don't know, five years? Yeah, I, I like that. I'd say five. Um, it's funny, I you don't see me much. If, if people can grow their crops really well, they don't typically call me. So you'll find me on the fringes of the industry yes. or in environments where these guys might not want to be growing things. Right. And uh, so we've had a lot of work in the regenerative categories lately. Right. Because they're just trying to d- discover something new. It's, it's, it's a whole... Uh... It's it's uh, like agri. I, I have told people agriculture is the last frontier, um, because you know there is there is. I want to raise. I want to raise a corn crop with no nitrogen, guys. There is. I want to raise a corn crop <laughs> with half my applied nitrogen, and then there are guys that I'll cut ten percent and be happy because I saved ten percent. You know, there's a full range. All right. The goal of all of those people is on a, is a good trajectory. It's a good goal. Oh yeah. And it's all in the same direction. Exactly. The 10% cut guy is trying, his goal is to reduce his, you know, his inputs, his applications as his goal is the same as the guy that wants to do it on zero. Oh yeah. Now is his application different? Absolutely. (laughs) But you know, and that's, we've talked about this over blue in the face, the shift going from full this to none this that is a very dangerous place to go so uh, without phasing it and testing it. I totally, totally agree with you. And I've actually it's, seen it's guys— financial, it's, farmer, it's farm and financial suicide, potentially. It's, and yeah, despite the savings from the reductions in fertilizers and pesticides and exactly. different things. And so, yeah. Uh, and we've seen guys that are growing good crops, I mean, with basically nothing. Yes. Now, maybe not this 400 bushel mark. Uh, right. But we're seeing guys that are, you know, they're in that 225. Uh, in Nebraska last year, we hit 280 with dramatic reductions, but not overnight. I mm. mean, plan yourself a, a five-year plan yeah. to get into those and incorporate good soil health practices to, to you have to come at it from both sense in in the true sense of the word a, a fully functioning environment doesn't need any fertilizer it will function and cycle but in agriculture we disturb the environment right everything we do including planting is a disturbance so you it is. we have to meet in the middle somewhere I mean, nature will take care of itself. Yeah, we're not farming nature. Absolutely, we're managing nature. Right. And um, anyway, man. I, and yeah, that's another really rat hole about that. <laughs> the, yeah. I get a lot of calls. People don't want to. They want to go down to nothing. And yes. uh, you know, most of them are hybrid systems, and most of them are starting in these. Uh, when when we're in a, a fully conventional system, it, it has some characteristics, you know, and uh, there's usually lower organic matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, our, our soils are dominated with bacteria. It doesn't have a lot of diversity in there. Uh, we're using a lot of chemicals that do have residues. So these have, you know, effects the following year that makes it hard for us to e- equilibrialize. Whatever I just screwed that word up, right? I, I think it was perfect. But, <laughs> yeah, but no, we we you got to do a transition, you know, and you have to focus from the ground and from the crop. Yeah, you know, here you want to have an here's an old school way, foliar applications. Sure. You know, so the soil's an ocean. The soil's got lots of life in it. We've only discovered, you know, maybe one percent. If that's probably being a lot, point one really? percent of what's really going on in the soil. It's it's like space, but. Wow. If we just do a foliar application, we avoid the soil. You know, let's avoid what we don't know down there. Let's mainline this stuff right into the plant so the plant can grow and balance itself. I get, uh, I am convinced that 10 years down the road from now, a lot of the products that are listed as biologicals, um, we're going to realize weren't a good companion to our native biology that's in our soils. So that uh, is my personal opinion. I believe in, uh, and I don't know, there's been controversy around what soil health is mm. or how to measure it. 
like some of this stuff now with these carbon things that that's not going to finish the way it is today. They're using parameters to pay people for carbon that they these things are not measures of soil health. Right. How where did they come from? But if you go into the the Pacific Northwest years and years ago, there was a Dr. Elaine Ingrams and uh, I wanted to say maybe Washington or Oregon State University and uh says we're good on volume <laughs> okay and so but anyway she was uh, and now the usda has adopted this in terms of what healthy soil should look at mm -hmm. and it's called the soil food web so soil health is not about soil life there's always a life in your soil i can go to the most polluted soil and find you overwhelming amounts of bacteria mm. so the soil health and cycling and and all of this carbon cycling in the ground it has to do with diversity of life there's kingdoms of life, there's animals, there's bacteria, there's fungi, and all of these things need to be there. So I think a better measure of the health and the, the ability of your soil to grow your plant is by the diversity of life. Mm. So if we're taking something, and there's, there's plenty of uses for some of the biologicals on the market today. Yeah. And, oh, I think I. But it's the opposite of diversity. Gonna, t five, ten years from now, we're going to know what, who, who, and what was really on the right track. Yeah, absolutely, you're right. And you're right. we're going to know who wasn't. Yeah, it's true. And um, you know, I don't know. I, I'm a farmer, so I look forward to seeing how what that comes out. Oh today. yeah, and you, you know? also have to watch these marketing claims. This oh, is, yes. I think, one of the things that brought me and you together. Yes. Some some of the things they're calling biologicals or biostimulants. It's total BS. Yeah. Like, there's nothing living in that product. Right. So we got to be a little careful between the marketing, the yeah. facts, and the fiction, I guess. Absolutely. Guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full-length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major plat podcast platforms. Um, we're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content.